In these images, you can see that in the body of a cnidarian, not all cells are the same. They have differentiated and chosen different fates. In sponges, there is some differentiation, but it can be reversed, and cells can dedifferentiate and redifferentiate. Here, these cells have chosen a permanent fate and thus form tissues. In cnidarians, there are two different tissues. A tissue known as ectoderm develops into the epidermis and to the nervous system, while the tissue known as the endoderm develops into the gastrodermis, which surrounds the vascular cavity. In humans, the ectoderm of embryos develops into the epidermis and nervous system, while the endoderm uh, differentiates into the lining of the gut as well. Between the epidermis and gastrodermis is an area known as the mesoglea, which in small cnidarians simply contains an adhesive glue-like substance which causes these two layers to adhere, but in larger cnidarians, this amorphous area may contain many cells as well. Thus, cnidarians are diploblastic, developing from two germ layers, as opposed to the bilateral animals, such as humans, which are triploblastic, developing from three germ layers. These germ layers in cnidarians form around a central space known as the gastrovascular cavity. Not only does this cavity allow for the digestion of larger food items, it also performs some circulation and distribution of materials, but also it allows for muscles which are contracting to have something to contract against. And so it provides resistance, which therefore aids in movement.